get this question a lot of times from uh, young aspiring uh, uh, candidates regarding uh, which is the uh, seat they should opt whether to take uh, DNB or MD or MS. So this question is faced by almost everybody and uh, I am trying to put forward uh, some of the points that each candidate should consider before uh, making a decision regarding this. So basically I will talk about the pros and cons of doing DNB. So as you know DNB is a standardized course uh, because it is having a standardized exit exam. So each person who is going to give this uh, exam after the end of the three year course is going to give the same exam all throughout India. So the same questions and uh, the same level of difficulty and uh, it is a very good standard. So that certification that you get after doing DNB is something that you can aspire for and uh, if you get it then yes definitely it is something that you can be proud of saying that yes I have done DNB and I have cleared the exams. So uh, it gives you a status symbol. So that is one of the biggest pros and uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, Many uh, candidates may not get their chosen field when they opt for MD or MS because uh, of various reasons. But if they go for DNB, there is a chance that you get your chosen specialty in a good institute. So uh, that is also a thing that a candidate should consider uh, before uh, opting for MD or MS in an average college or taking DNB in a very good uh, center. So uh, that also needs to be uh, understood by the candidates. The other thing is that um, the exit exam is tough. So that is one of the cons, but uh, that is a relative con. So because you know, if you really want to get something good, then uh, you need to work hard for it. So, but everybody knows that the exit exam of DNB is tough because one uh, the uh, there is no internal so nobody is going to you're not going to be able to influence anybody by showing your hard work that you did for the three years but you will be judged only uh, and only uh, of what you show in your papers and uh, what you perform during the practical exam so there are two parts one is theory and one is practical so you need to clear both and the practical exam will be held not in your center, it will be held somewhere else uh, in a neighboring state, uh, definitely in a neighboring state, not in the same state. So you might find some difficulties uh, coping up with uh, those uh, languages and all that but usually the center will provide you a translator so that isn't a problem but there won't be any internal. So it will be a totally, completely new uh, center for your final exam and uh, nobody will know how hard you have worked. So, but whatever you perform, definitely people will evaluate and uh, that advantage uh, in uh, MD, MS in a medical college is not there in DNB. So that has to be taken into consideration also and uh, DNB uh, as DNBs are readily taken by uh, corporate hospitals once they complete their course. They are more preferred by corporate hospitals as freshers uh, rather than MDMS candidates. That is also something uh, which is the trend going on right now. And uh, uh, DNB is uh, given to hospitals uh, which are very uh, upcoming and uh, good patient load only these hospitals get DNB accreditation so uh, you can be uh, confident that that hospital must be having a good patient load and uh, new techniques and new surgeries must be being performed there so definitely the candidate would have a good exposure if he chooses the good institute for DNB so these are all the 
pros on uh, f uh, uh, dnb basically the only con in dnb is that uh, the exam is tough but that is a relative con the other thing is that if you actually don't want to work in corporate or private practice but you actually just want to teach in a medical college in that case you better go uh, to any uh, medical college private medical college or any medical college and do your course there because uh, uh, dnb uh, even though it is all equal and uh, sometimes uh, um, as competent and even better than MDMS, but as far as teaching is concerned, um, uh, because it is being conducted in hospitals and not in a medical college, so you have to do one additional year of senior residency to become an assistant professor. But of course, you can get a job as a senior resident anytime in any medical college and you can be promoted to professor or HOD also even when you do DNB. But only the beginning step of doing one additional year of senior residency is there if you do DNB and that relates only if you want to work in a medical college and you want to get into the teaching profession. But even that is not a hindrance. You can do one additional layer of senior residency and then you are eligible to become um, your uh, assistant professor and uh, you can carry on with your teaching uh, profession also. So basically if you are getting a good um, institute and you are getting the field of your dreams then I think you should go for it does not matter if it is DNB or MD or MS. Uh, you should not have any regrets in uh, your life regarding the decision you make. So make a decision that you will not regret and all the best.